Stage 19, Trecime di Lavaredo, 182 kilometers with 5,469 meters of climbing. This stage, I think, quick maths, has the most meters of climbing per kilometer, particularly when you consider that it does start sort of gently climbing uphill for 70 k's, but imperceptible. This is all back to back now. No flat for 100 k's, 4 k's, 7% descent, 13 k's, 6%, 10 k's, 9.3%, Paso Jal, that's where Bernard launched in the Cortina d'Ampezzo stage descent. It's a stepped climb, 8K, 7.2%. Then there's a ramp, 1K, 11%. There's two descents in it. Then 9K, 7.1% to finish, Benji. This stage is why they do nothing on the stage before. And I think there could be carnage on this stage from Paso Jao. I think so as well. This is a, a very brutal stage. And the fact that Paso Jao is the one that is that that climb before we get to the Passo Tre Croci and the Trecima de Lavaredo is one that most of the action will happen. If there's a crazy person in town, like a Bilbao or a Bardet, I do see a possibility where a Bardet already goes at the top of the Valparolo because it's also steep there and tries to benefit from the fact that he can gain a, a descent advantage on others before he gets to the Jao, for example, because climbing-wise, he might lose out with some other riders in the peloton but this is indeed one of those stages where we look at the parkour and we say this is one of the bigger mountain stages of the year it's together with the Crans Montana stage the stage I'm mostly looking forward to in this Grand Tour also because Trecime de Lavaredo that final climb it's 9.5 kilometers at 7 percent that's the the part I'm also scared about because will riders be so scared of that last climb that they won't do anything early I think the stage is too hard before Trecime to not do anything before Trecime. I think action will occur on the Jao and so forth because it's hard enough to do that compared to in the Fedal stage last year, for example, or 2022, there was lesser climbs before the Fedal. This video is brought to you by Zwift. Whether you're just starting out on your cycling journey or are looking for those final tune-ups ahead of a big event or race, Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes things fun. There are nine different worlds, thousands of kilometers of virtual road, including replicas of real-world climbs like Alpe du Zwift. There's workouts, training plans, events, and even races for every level of rider. Zwift's massive community means you're never alone on the road. So if you want to know more about Zwift or want to start your seven-day trial for free, head to Zwift.com below. And what's the expected race situation, right? An Avonapol or a Thomas-type character in good form of their Vuelta or Tour shape, they take a boatload of time in the TTs. They're pretty difficult to drop. Maybe you take a minute on stage 13, which is a lot. But counting in the TT to come, the next stage, if you're Lander, you're Hindley, you're Rod uh, Rodriguez, good TT, still losing time. Are you so still losing time? You've you got to make four minutes up somewhere. So you're not making four minutes up on Trecime de Lavaredo at the end, because I agree, it looks like Vidaya, right? Maybe even 100 meters higher in altitude. It's got 14%. The last 20 minutes is hard, but you can't make four minutes there. Hindley was on the same time as Carapaz, just behind. Yep. So if we have the expected race situation, which we hope, it will force the poor TT strong climbers, if they haven't done it already, to attack on Paso Jao. Or UA, and as well, we will see uh, someone like Hugh Carthy, Louis Menkes. This is the stage to move from eighth on GC to fifth to fourth. You can really try it on this stage. A pretty fantastic stage, in the way you said it. Like we will have such a grand tour where the time trial focus of GC riders will gain them an advantage, and then we've got the climbers that are trying to kick back in this in this last week and this stage is the example of that where the climbers can do damage and most likely will do damage on on some shape or form i'm really curious like what would an mk pool be able to survive on a stage like this because we have not seen him take on a stage as difficult as this or as difficult as the for example crans montana stage so those are some intriguing aspects to why i would like to see an mk do the giro for example but Let's jump away from this major stage for a second because I've got another major stage. Tarvisio to Monte Lusari stage, stage 20, a mountain time trial. And it's an 18.3 kilometer <laughs> ITT, similar length to the first time trial in this Giro. After that, 11 kilometers flat, we've got the Monte Lusari, 7.1 kilometers at 12.2%, up to 22%. So, well, there are some rumors that this was an unpaved road, but... Apparently, according to the technical info on the Giro website, it says that 
the first eight kilometers of the climbing side of this time trial is on concrete paved, paved roads. So it has to be. It's mad if it's unpaved. Like it, 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 it'll be shit. <laughs> it'll be shit, but it will be not gravel. Sure. <laughs> You tweeted Tom Dumoulin still does this on a TT bike, <laughs> and then Pagatcha do you know five watts per kilo? Be like, how do you go faster than me? Um, <laughs> this is bordering ridiculous. Like, is <laughs> what is this? Sorry again. Let me check. This. Like, I'm not sure. Is this 4.7 k is 15 percent? Now, listen. I know there's a supply shortage due to COVID of equipment, but mechanics teams. If I see, okay, if you don't, if you can't be bothered changing your sprinter's cassette and you say walk up at chief <laughs> or grind up at whatever, if you have a GC guy and I see a GC guy going at 40 RPM, take a look at yourself in the mirror. You've been put on notice. You've got six months. Get them a mountain bike cassette um, or whatever it takes. There will be a bike change at the bottom. I don't know if they'll have a zone for it. They'll have to. But uh, can Folofarov, is he retired or can he win this still? <laughs> this is the retired. <laughs> can someone give Folofarov a 10-day contract <laughs> for this, <laughs> this TT? I reckon like this is Prairies was hard. So I think Remco would clean this TT up still, frankly. Like let's be honest about it. If we see this parkour, it's so damn ridiculously hard that if Bora sent Kion Brooks, it's literally child abuse. So I, I, it's <laughs> I'd, send him, I'd send him to do all three Grand Tours next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a bit harsh well, as well. He's, he's good. <laughs> yeah, but not for three Grand Tours. <laughs> it's for it's like a second year in World Tour, perhaps. Third week, Giro Hindley. Isn't this the perfect TT he could have hoped for? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of this is like GC rider territory. This is not a time trial for the Filippo Ganas of the world. Let's be clear about that. We look at the flat 11 kilometers and we've got 11 kilometers where we've got a 14, 15 minute effort roughly. And then the climb itself is 30 to 35 minutes, 35 minutes, something like that. I think it's nah, pretty nah. long. Quick it. Oh, you mean the 7.1 Ks or the... Monte de Sari until the finish. Yeah, 30. It's going to be pretty tough, eh? And uh, that would also argue, like, obviously, a bike change at the foot of the Monte Lusari for GC riders is a must, in my opinion, because I think the TT bike is still an advantage for the 11 kilometers of flat before the climb. And the, using a TT bike afterwards is plain stupid. So <laughs> got nothing else to say about that. I don't need a MAV degree to figure out <laughs> whether a bike change is necessary on this one. But when it comes to bike change mechanics, like, you think it's better to change it just that the bottom of the climb when you're like on the climb itself or before the climb at high speed that's the thing though you don't want to start you don't want to kick off again at like 15 percent. you ideally want you ideally want the climb to start 500 meters on the tt bike at five six percent it slows you down and then there's a flat a bit of like three four percent where you can change it where you're not having to come from 55 k's to break to zero to then start again planche de belfi kind of had that sort of zone um, this does not so difficult choice to be made. They'll have they'll have to set up a zone. Twenty two percent. That section needs to be the bike change zone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'll be like the Campanuts one. How many people won't be able to clip it in? Oh, this could be oh. this will be scenes. I mean, last year we had the Fadia stage was the sort of crowning moment. You know, there was a change in the Melia Rosa. It wasn't actually the best stage. Like, let's be honest, it wasn't that great. Uh, TTs, I think they're trying to have their planche de Belfi moment here. The Giro, I yep. like it. It's different. People will talk about it. We'll be excited for it. 